Hey guys, on today's episode, I'm working on this 1986 BMW 535i. Now, I found this abandoned in Manhattan in a parking lot while I was looking for other cars. I'm walking around with the owner. I was like, hey, what's going on with that one? He's like, ah, I'm junking that. Then we're going to part it and just destroy it. I was like, whoa, whoa, definitely don't do that. This thing is gorgeous. So what we're going to do is clean it up, detail it, make this thing look absolutely amazing, then give it away oh, to a new wow. home. Crazy, today on this episode right? of Drive and Protect. Big thank you to our sponsor, Factor 75, for helping us out with today's video. More on this during lunch. Thanks, man. How fast does this go? Is this stick shift? It's no, it's electric. Oh, it's all electric? Yeah. How much was this? I'm buying the Tesla in a few days. Nice. The Model S, I'm gonna upgrade it to 75 kilowatts. It's usually 50 kilowatts. Right. Put it 75. Nice. Welcome to New York City. While I was in New York City to pick up the 1978 Mercedes 450 SLC, that thing is gonna be awesome. We also found the 535i sitting up on the roof, but we ended up getting it started. If you want to make quick money, those caps are original BBS RS. Put them up on eBay, they're like $200 a pop. Bringing it down in the elevator, hooking up to the trailer and bringing it home. Once back at the studio, I drove her inside and onto the lift. Under the lights, you can see just how bad this thing is. The paint is swirled up, missing in some places, and then there's just rust on the hood. That thing's gotta be thrown away. The rest of the car is covered in rail dust from the elevated subway on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Mold in the taillights and emblems, faded trim, and the wheels are really dirty, but they're very, very desirable. They're, they're super cool once they get them cleaned up. The door jam is packed with years of junk, and the interior is dusty and kind of dry, I think just from sitting outside all those years, but it's actually in decent shape overall. Step one is to lift her up and get the wheels off and then power wash the undercarriage to flush out whatever might still be living in the frame. When I got to the trunk jams, years of leaves and grime just came out with the pressure of the water. At this point in the process, I turned the temperature up on the power washer to help dislodge a lot of the trapped grime. And as you can see, there is steam all over the studio from doing that. what happens when you sit outside in New York City for a decade. Okay, when it comes to lunchtime, I have a ridiculously high metabolism. Plus, if you add in the fact that I'm polishing cars all day long, 
I am fire hosing calories and I just don't have the time to go out, stand in line, wait for some fast food that doesn't have you know, high caloric intake that's actually quality. So what I do is I use Factor 75. They actually deliver the food right here. There's a big thing as a business owner, I don't want to leave every 10 minutes. I have customers showing up, that kind of thing. So when it gets delivered, I take it upstairs, put it in the refrigerator and I eat two of them a day. They have everything from keto, smart calorie, veggie, and my favorite, Protein Plus, let me show you how it works. Every week I check out their menu online and with 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, I always seem to find something to eat, including snacks, smoothies, juices, and so on. For me, it's about good food shipped to my <laughs> door, cooked in two minutes so I can get back to polishing and running my business. To get yours, visit factor75.com or click the link down below and use the promo code AMO60 to get 60% off your first Factor box. Now it's time to eat. After the initial wash, I tried to clay the paint afterwards and it was terrible from years of sitting next to the train. Ugh. It was actually so bad that it was the first time I had to spray plum wheel cleaner to chew up the bits of metal shards within the paint. Normally, this is reserved for wheels. I did this on the paint too. After the second rinse, I compressed air, blow dried everything, and then started the wheel cleaning with Ammo Plum, Mini Wheel Wooly, and the two tier wheel brush. What do you want to do with your life and all that kind of talk? I keep saying, like, what do you want to do? It's like, if you could do, if you were like super rich and you could do anything, you know what I say? That? Probably just wash my car. And they're like, yeah, I know, but like, okay, like after that, I don't know, probably wash one of my other 10 cars. Wh what about after that? And I was like, wax it? I'm like, where are we going with this? And, you know, and they're like, all right, you should probably be in the car wash industry. <laughs> All of the ammo products and tools used here and all of my videos can be found at my website, ammonyc.com. Now I've spent years perfecting and tweaking each formula for their specific use in the detailing process. Be sure to sign up on the website to be notified of my latest formula releases. Next, I removed everything from the interior, including the trunk. For the carpets, I used Ammo Shag Carpet Cleaner in the air diffuser to sort of get the fibers to stand up and release the dirt before I go in and steam clean the carpets. Because I found some white mold on one of the doors, I cleaned each with lather, an interior brush, and then I went back in and steam cleaned to speed up the process of the mold removal.
rugs now looking much better. I found a few random coffee stains and hit them with siphon coffee cleaner and a drill brush and they came right out. When I was all done, I added carpet stripes in the now thick, clean fibers for that fresh feeling when you get inside the car, but in reality to me, I think it just looks like a baseball field, so it's super cool. Finally, on the interior, I power washed and drill brushed the trunk carpets, cleaned the spare tire, and applied a thick coat of mousse to the very, very dry interior leather. After you apply mousse, be sure to buff it off after a minute or two. You can actually see it kind of seeping into the material because it's going to return it back to a matte finish, which is what you're going for on the interior. Bright and early the next day, it was time for an exterior facelift with my polishing fluid and wool polishing pad on a DA Rupaz 21 millimeter throw machine. All right, guys, I'm behind the camera right now, and I wanted to show you that we are working on the hood. I'm doing some polishing tests, and you can see right over there, there's tons of rust, so this is gonna need to be replaced at some point, but it's a great idea to do some tests because the rest of the paint is actually quite good, and so this test is gonna dictate a lot. Right off the bat, you can see, really, really bad. There is tons of UV damage because it was sitting outside on the third floor in the Upper East Side, and it was right next to the elevated train. You can also see a ton of rail dust. That's what all these little dots are. So for the first test, what I did is I polished right here, and you can see, looks much better, right? Look at the light here versus there. Significantly different, but I'll hold my finger there. Can you see all the thousands and zillions of little dots everywhere? That's still the rail dust just penetrating that clear coat. So the first test I did was with a wool pad and I did it with some uh, foam pad polish. Then what I did, I said, okay, let's try to figure this out and see if we can get it to look absolutely show car perfect. So what I did was I took 1500 grit sandpaper and then I finished up with 3000 grit and then, then I went to the wool pad and the foam polish and now look at it unbelievable so it's actually it's, it's flawless it's, this is what i would consider handing back for you know show car quality and we can do it on paint that was just completely destroyed so i think i'm going to do a, a bunch of the steps on the rest of the car because it's, it's ridiculously straight for sitting outside for a decade or so and when the new owner comes i think he's going to be thrilled Look at that, the camera is not doing it justice in person. It's insane. Look at the difference there versus here. Oh, you could dive into that. You get so excited about these things. Now looking amazing, I protected it and added some depth and shine to the deep blue color with ammo, blush, ceramic infused carnauba wax. 
Afterwards, I disassembled the front black plastic grills to clean them up a little bit before I restored them with Frame Pro Trim Restore. Allowed everything to dry. While I was doing that, I restored the destroyed trim everywhere on the car itself, and it made a huge difference. Lastly, I cleaned the windows with a white scrubber and a razor blade because the rail dust was so thick and stuck on the glass that I actually had to shave it off. When I was done, I squeegee cleaned everything and it looked fantastic. Afterwards, I installed the fresh rims and applied mud tire dressing to the dried out rubber. And the before and after was huge on this car. I, I love this BMW. I think the new owner is gonna love it too. Hey guys. Hey, what's going on, Dustin? I'm Larry, come on in. Nice to meet you. You? Mike. I'm Larry, come on in. What do you guys think? That's, oh my God. Crazy, wow. right? That's beautiful. I think it's awesome. It was a lot of fun. Let me show you, come on. If you look at the, the rims themselves, from what I understand, these are incredibly valuable. And in fact, these little pieces here are a couple hundred bucks a piece because they, they pop off. And like when you're driving, like right. some you know, BMW guy, like, ah, oh, I'm missing one piece. Right. So those are super cool. Redyed this. Now the interior oh my God. is actually pretty good for a car that's been sitting for a decade. It literally looks immaculate, not, like it's, it's perfection. It's nuts, I, I mean it even smells good inside too. Me and my uncle have always been into old school BMWs. I've owned a 1989 BMW M3, unfortunately I had to get rid of that. Right. Um, I have a son now, he has a son, so it's something that me and him are going to work on and then hopefully pass that down to our sons and just make this a beautiful weekend driver. Alright, well the only thing left to do to give you the old keys. I appreciate it. Enjoy it, Thank man. Thank you so much. Oh, this is great. It's beautiful. Okay, now that the Beamer is heading off to its new home, you've got to check out this episode. This is the Mercury Montclair. We found it in an abandoned building that was about to be crushed. We saved it, we brought it back here, we cleaned it, and then gave it to a gentleman named Pavel, and he lost his mind. He started weeping when he saw the car. It's an absolutely amazing episode. Be sure to check it out right here. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.